Dr. Dev Gainer, Cataract Coach. We have a case today of pseudo exfoliation. We'll start by putting anesthetic under the iris. You can also put some midriatic agents, and that should help expand the pupil a little bit. We'll also do viscomedriasis, injecting a dispersive viscoelastic and trying to push the iris back. So we get about a four and a half, maybe four millimeter pupil. If you look at the edge of the pupil, you can see there's the pseudo exfoliation material. We'll make our main incision. These patients can have a host of issues associated with the cataract, and that is due to the pseudo exfoliation. There can be glaucoma. The pseudo exfoliation can also lead to loose zonules, which can lead to a shallow anterior chamber. Poor dilation is also a factor of that. Now we're going to use two choppers, one on each hand, and with the choppers, we're going to gently stretch the pupil. And we can go in one meridian, we can go in multiple. Here we're going to stretch one direction, and now the other direction. Be careful when you do this, don't touch the anterior lens capsule, because you don't want to puncture the capsule. Now a little bit more viscomedriasis, and now we have a pretty reasonable pupil. This pupil may not stay this large. It may come down in the middle or end of the case. So we're going to make a sufficiently large capsorexis. Do remember that patients with pseudoxfoliation can have postoperative capsorphimosis of the anterior lens capsule. So you do not want a small or baby-sized capsorexis. Make a generous capsorexis at least 5 millimeters, maybe even 5.5 or 6 millimeters. We're going to make the round rectus here. Some of it does go under the iris. That's okay. We know where that is. When we do our hydrodissection, I do want to bring the nucleus out of the capsular bag. So there's the fluid wave going across. There's the nucleus being prolapsed. And now we'll help dial the nucleus up, at least partially captured within the pupil. Now the iris, the pupil, is helping me by holding the nucleus in place. This is a more viscoelastic to protect the corneal endothelium and give us a little more working space. With the nucleus held like this, you can see the degree of nuclear sclerosis. We'll put our phaco probe in and we're going to chop it right away into two halves. So here comes the phaco probe, buzz into the center of the nucleus, chopper goes around and bring the two inserts together and apart. And now we have two halves. We can now get the first half and start to apply phaco energy to it to emulsify it and remove it. We're also going to sur further sub-chop it as well. So buzzing in again, taking our time. The anterior chamber is a little on the shallow side, so we want to work, if we can, at the iris plane. And so we're emulsifying the one half of the nucleus. We've got about a quarter gone, and here's the remaining quarter of the first half. A little bit of energy, and remember to use phaco power modulations here to minimize that. Half the nucleus is out, buzz into the other half, and here now we can sub-chop into two quarters. There's a little bit more room in the eye. Keeping the pieces at our phaco tip, we can slowly apply phaco energy. And here we go, last couple of pieces. Note the choppers in the safety position to prevent the posterior capsule from coming forwards. And we'll keep the, cho the chopper there just to be sure. Here's the last little piece of nucleus to be removed. That looks pretty good. At this point, we'll switch over to the IA probe and we'll remove the cortex. Now, when removing the cortex, we want to be careful that the zonules are holding on tight. And how do we check this? Look at the edge of the capsulorexis. We don't want to see the capsule moving. When I do the cortex removal, and I'd like to grab sheets of it like we're doing here, I want just the cortex material to come loose and be removed. And I don't want to see any movement of the capsule or the capsulorexis. So take your time on this part. This should be done in slow motion even. Here's a little bit of uh, cataract material clogging the tip, so we'll help push that in. And we'll remove all of this. You want to remove as much of the cortex as you can, hopefully all of it, because residual cortex will cause some unusual capsular contractions. So here we go. We've removed it. Strandy material on the posterior capsule could be gently vacuumed, but again, in this case, we want to do no harm. So we've got to be very careful in making sure that the capsule 
and the capsule racks don't move, that the zonules are not being broken, and we can always certainly do a YAG laser capsulotomy if we need to. Filling our bag with the viscoelastic, now we're using a cohesive viscoelastic. We can expand the pupil a little bit more, and you can see the edge of the capsorexis. That looks pretty good. IOL being implanted inside the eye. You can use a three-piece lens here. Some people, if the zions are bad, will place the haptics, the sulcus, and optic capture. Some people place a three-piece lens entirely in the bag. A one-piece lens is perfectly fine as well, especially in this case where the zionules appear to be pretty reasonable during surgery. For the few patients that have pseudo exfoliation, there can be a late dislocation of the entire bag and IOL complex, and that can be sutured back into position. Finally, IA probe going to be introduced back in the eye to remove our viscoelastic. Before I do that, though, use the chopper and lift up the iris just to make sure there's no residual cortex, no nuclear fragments left behind. And we've just checked 360. Everything looks fine, so no residual cataract material. So now the IA probe is to start off by removing viscoelastic from behind the eye well. And then we'll remove the remainder of the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber and anterior segment of the eye. Looking pretty good. This patient had a nice, beautiful outcome and had a similar type of pseudoxfoliation issues in her second eye. And just want to show you that with proper planning and certain special techniques, we can do a beautiful job on patients who do have pseudoxfoliation and it's not too much of a burden for us. Gently sealing up the incisions. And you can also aim some of this fluid towards the angle of the eye just to ensure that there are no retained nuclear chips or no retained viscoelastic. So a little bit of fluid going here to seal the paracentesis. They're squirting in the angle, and that looks great. Sealing it up looks like a beautiful case. Thanks for watching.